Welcome. Today we gather here to commemorate Mustafa Kemal Atatürk on the 82nd anniversary of his passing. We will start our program with a memorial rest ceremony followed by a moment of silence and the national anthem. Atatürk, meaning, of, meaning the father of Turks, is the most important figure for many Turks and everyone at Takan family. He is more than a political figure. When we say Atatürk, we don't only refer to his personality, his successful campaign in independence war, or his brilliance in foreign affairs. Atatürk represents a mentality for all Takan that values the human dignity, peace, progress, and respect for all. It is for this exact reason Takam is home to all who understands and adheres these values where the board of directors of our organization serves you under the light of Atatürk's principles. Many have written about Atatürk. Apart from earlier Turkish scholars such as Şevket Süreyya Aydemir in his Lonely Man, Tek Adam, and Falih Rıfkı Atay, Çankaya, more recent publications, Kurtuluş and Cumhuriyet by Turgut Özakman, there are also two seminal works on Atatürk published by respected international scholars. Lord King Ross's Atatürk, Rebirth of the Nation, and Andrew Mango's Atatürk, Biography of a uh, Modern Turkey. Today, I chose the lesser known one, Andrew Mango's book, and I would like to read a few passages from his work. Mustafa Kemal Atatürk is one of the most important statesmen of the 20th century. He established and shaped the Turkish Republic. He influenced the history of his country's neighbors as well. For peoples ruled by foreigners, he showed a way to national independence in amity with the rest of the world. Atatürk is usually known as a radical modernizer and westernizer. The description is true, but not sufficient. He imported Western practices in order to bring his country into parity with the richest countries of the world. Most of which were to be found in the West. But his aim was not imitation, but participation in a universal civilization 
which, like the thinkers of the European Enlightenment, he saw as an onward march of humanity, regardless of the religion and the division it caused. He believed that the struggle is genuine. Independence should be waged by each nation for itself in the name of an overarching secular ideal of progress common to all, and therefore leaving no room for antagonism towards the most advanced nations. He was an anti-imperialist, only in the sense that his ideal was a universal commonwealth of civilized people. Above all, he was a builder, the greatest nation builder of the modern history. It was because Atatürk broke the tie with the religious law that he was able to decree the equality of sexes. Turkish women had achieved a considerable degree of freedom in sophisticated Ottoman society in the capital. Female emancipation progressed during the Great War, when the government of the young Turks had no choice but enlist the women labor. But as, as long as the Islam affected the civil war law, full equality was impossible, and any advance in their freedom could be challenged and ultimately reversed. Turkish women owe their right to Atatürk. The outside world took a long time to understand Atatürk's policy. It is still finding it hard to place the country he has shaped. He is said to have steered Turkey towards Europe and the West. It is true to the extent that the civilization to which he aspired had and still has its center in the West. But his allegiance was not to an, ide to an ideal, not a geographical area. The ideal of catching up with the modern civilization, wherever it might be found, of contributing to its further development, continues to inspire most Turks. Atatürk showed first that Atatürk, uh, Turks can be their own as soldiers. Thousands of them now doing so in the international environment of culture and business. This suggests that Atatürk's ideal was not an idle dream. Atatürk's message is that East and West can meet on the ground of secular values and mutual respect. That nationalism is compatible with peace. That human reason is the only true guide in life. It is an optimistic message, and its validity will always be in doubt. But it's an ideal that commands respect. Andrew Mango from his book, Atatürk. Now I would like to turn uh, to our immediate past president and executive committee member, Nirifar Esen Bilgen, for statements on Atatürk that were made by statesmen around the world. Thank you, Ardan. Yes, former U.S. President Johnny Kennedy said Atatürk, with his historic achievements, was one of the greatest leaders of the 20th century. He was a towering figure of human ideals. His extraordinary leadership and his military genius accomplished so much for his country, first in battlefields and then in building his nation materially and in spirit. He created a modern and sovereign state from the ashes of a defeated empire. He was a great peacemaker, an ultimate reformer, and a torch bearer of freedom. He won not only the heart of his nation, but the hearts of oppressed nations as well. We all miss him. Another former US President Franklin Roosevelt said, in my interview with the Foreign Secretary of Russia, I asked him, to his opinion, who was the most remarkable statesman in Europe? Without hesitation, he said, the most remarkable statesman in Europe was Atatürk, the president of Turkey. My despair today is that I missed the chance of meeting that great man whom history books glorify lavishly. His achievements are mind boggling. More recent US president, Bill Clinton said, I have no doubt that Atatürk is the greatest statesman of this millennium as he is the only leader who succeeded to become the leader of the century, not of the year. Another statesman, uh, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, who was also time mate with Atatürk said, if Atatürk had lived today, the world would have been a more interesting place. When, in 1915, during our ill-fated Dardanelle campaign, fate brought us across in Gallipoli, we immediately knew that we were up against a military genius 
and a formidable strategist. Soon he emerged as a noble warrior. Later, he proved himself as a genuine peacemaker and consummate statesman as well. Another British uh, person, General Sir Charles Thousand, said, I conducted interviews with 15 kings and presidents. I cannot remember one single incident in which I was as excited and impressed as when I interviewed Atatürk. He is very intelligent and a polished gentleman. He was a captivating personality with enormous power of spirit. Another general, Douglas MacArthur, said, I don't know any other person in history who, who combined military genius and human ideals in his person as brilliantly as Atatürk did. I was fortunate to meet and interview that extraordinary leader in person. Today, I cherish my memories of him fondly and dearly. At this time, I look forward to meet him again. He was one of his enemies, like uh, General Metaxas from Greece. They fought once against each other, said, Atatürk is a giant personality. He emerged in the world scene at the most critical time of the global conjunction. His country was defeated in a grueling war and disintegrating. He successfully liquidated the old empire and created a new dynamic state. He was also a great peacemaker. He extended his hand generously to his old enemies and made peace with him with them, he not only won the war, but he won the hearts as well. His work, the new republic that he founded, stands tall as, as a monument. Atatürk is a gift of history to his nation as well as to humanity. This statement issued by UNESCO in 1963 called Atatürk a true symbol of honor for humanity. Today, Many projects that UNESCO is working on are inspired by Atatürk. And UNESCO accepted November 10, the day he dies, as the science day for peace and development. Such nice coincidence suits very well with his legacy. Mustafa Kemal Atatürk was a leader, but said, if, says, if he says something irrational or scientific, you should choose the rational and scientific facts also said, science is the only true guide in life. Hayatta en hakiki mürşit ilimdir. He was a soldier, but emphasized the importance of peace. He said, peace at home, peace in the world. Yurtta barış, dünyada barış. Atam, you are the pet, you are the light of our pet. You elucidate our horizon. Rest in peace. We neither forget nor let you be forgotten. Thank you for joining us today for this uh, important uh, day. Uh, we would like to close our program here and uh, thank you again.